autism in 1970, and people can argue that this is from diagnostics and things like that, but, but we know from 2012 to 2013, no, something's happening here. We had one in 10,000 diagnosed. I mean, the first di di diagnosis of autism was in the 1950s, but now it's one in 50 in the United States. I mean, we have to really think seriously about what's happening. Now, if you look at the definition of autism, a pervasive developmental disorder characterized by severe deficits in social interaction and communication, by an extremely limited range of activities and interests, and often by the presence of repetitive stereotype behavior. This about defines everybody under 30. Well, apparently, most of us, well, the average user, is checking his smartphone at least 110 times a day. Apparently, there are some similarities between the smartphone addiction to other addictions. For example, when a smoker can get his cigarette, he feels stressful, he feels anxious. It's the same for an alcoholic who can't get his drink. And apparently, we feel stressed when we can't get our phone on, or when our battery is about to die. You probably know this feeling. And a research done in Australia among 3,000 people under the age of 30 found that nine out of every 10 admit to feel this anxiety while having his battery dying. Researchers in an article concluded that if you have some of the following symptoms, you could have smartphone addiction. Disregard of negative consequences, chronic anxiety, or lack of impulse control. I'm sure many of us here have a smartphone in either our pocket or a purse. And if you keep checking that during the talk, that is lack of impulse control, which is a symptom of smartphone addiction. Peer pressure. How many of you get frustrated when someone does not respond to a text message fast enough? Come on, yeah. We all do that. Why? Because there's a possibility that someone could respond immediately, so in a way, we expect it. And being a recipient, you want to be a good spouse, significant other, or coworker. So what do you do? Well, you make yourself just that much more available here, that much more available there. And this perpetuates to a point where you're literally on your phone 24-7 because you're trying to keep up with external obligation. Ibn Mas'ud said, I said to the Prophet, هل لساعتي من علم تعرف به does the hour have a knowledge that you can know it by? He said, Naam, Ya Ibn Mas'ud. And Muslims have to know these signs so they recognize them when they see them. And there are many signs. And, and the Prophet said that the fitin will be shown to the hearts like a, a, a mat. Udan, Udan. It has two lines, a horizontal and vertical line. This is the TV set. This is, the, this is the set. It's a hasir. It's a mat. And the Prophet said, the fitin will be shown to the hearts like a mat. Kal hasir. And this is how shaitan is destroying the hearts. By showing them the fitin on these films and on TV over and over again until people just become accustomed to violence. It's a normal thing. They're not shocked by it anymore. Uh, these are signs. Ya ibn Mas'ud, inna min alam sa'ati wa ashratiha an tuwasil al-atbaqu wa an tuqta' al-arham. This to me is one of the clear prophetic miracles of the Prophet He said, tuwasil al-atbaq, that the, the dishes will be communicating continuously and the Prophet used the very word that's used for satellite communications, muwasalat, and people will sever their family ties. In other words, people will stay home and watch television on satellite dish and they won't go visit their neighbors. This is an amazing hadith to me.